Welcome to Old View Farm. We've got some new additions wanted to share and uh, some updates on our lambing season. So stick around. So we got two new girls on the farm. They just arrived this morning. This is Strawberry with the horns. This one here is Liberty eating away in the grass here. They are uh, just getting trained to our electric fence. But they are two, uh, they're going to be one years old in July, and they are Dexter heifers. So, looking forward to uh, starting up our cattle herd here. And uh, it'll probably be a year from now, and next, well, a year and a couple months from now, and next July, that we're going to get them bred and uh, start growing. But... In the meantime, they're going to help us uh, utilize our grass a little better out here. Lawnmowers. Lawnmowers, yep. Yeah, they're pretty tame. Yeah, big beautiful lawnmowers. <laughs> <laughs> the Dexters are a heritage breed. It started out in Ireland. Um, they're known to be good milk producers as well as great beef animals. They are a smaller breed, which is one of the reasons we liked them. Uh, we don't want a real heavy cows out here that are going to pug up our pastures when it's wet out. So uh, we thought uh, these would be a good fit for our rotational grazing efforts. Um, they max out right around 1,100 pounds. And that's a big one. Um, they don't always get that big. And... Uh, yeah, so we were leaning towards Dexter's when we first decided to come out and uh, do the farm. Decided to do the, the sheep first and get some experience. But um, we were really happy to find these. They were only about an hour away and the, uh, the seller was willing to deliver. We went to see him uh, last weekend and just thought these are the most beautiful little heifers I've ever seen. So... They just got delivered this morning, so we're wel welcome these, welcoming these girls to the farm. We did set up just a single strand along the barn side just to make sure they aren't rubbing on our metal and banging against the, the sheep handling set up here. We've got a 70 gallon stock tank on a float here set up for them. Cool fresh water and we did put the line over top to kind of protect the, the float. Make sure they don't grab that up. And make sure they don't tip over the tank and knock it around. Then we've got a couple couple poly fences set up over here that uh, oh, there's Nikki going to check on the sheep. Some dogs are getting excited. But yeah, we've got these two poly fences set up so we can strip graze our way back across the training lot here. I don't expect it's going to take them long. Uh, we've already had a few good uh, fence touches that they. Uh, Although they haven't had any experience with electric before, they are learning very quickly. Yeah, it looks like they've gotten relaxed enough around my presence to do a little grazing. So that's nice to see. They're still pretty on edge, but they just had a, about an hour and a quarter drive and then they got shocked a couple times or in a new spot with different forage and don't have the rest of their herd around them so can't say I really blame them. But I think they're going to settle in here nicely. Should have some shade off the barn in another hour or so. And a little bit off that tree during the daytime. So. We got the 
sheep and the goats and the llama all together in this pretty big paddock. We're not keeping them very tight right now just because they're still getting used to each other. We got 17 little baby lambs in here and just don't want them feeling stressed out and crowded together. So pretty big paddock here. Um, I'm going to move them across that fence this afternoon. I'm going to head down back towards that hill. There's a lot of I want to keep them out of this hickories, at least the goats. We're thinking about splitting up the sheep and goats just so we can graze under the hickories with the sheep without the goats eating the bark off them. But uh, to be determined, there's plenty of other grass and roses we can graze and we can go down that hill and around the back side of that hill that we grazed earlier. But we didn't get very low on the hill where all the roses are hanging out. so. I think that's what we're going to do is head back that way around that hill and get under the, the back side of the pond there. Still not sure when we're going to introduce the cows to the rest of the flirt here, but uh, you know, we just got them today, so we're going to have to take a little time and observe and see how they're doing and make, make a judgment. But uh, yeah, everybody's doing, been doing pretty good. We had 23 lambs total, and we lost six of them. Now, two of them we never saw um, alive, but we, we found the dogs had found them and, and, and eaten them. And they were in a paddock separate from the rest of the sheep. So we're not sure if they were birthed, stillborn, and abandoned, and then we moved everybody without seeing them, and the dogs found them later, or if somehow one of the sheep crossed the, the fence over by the dogs and they killed it. Um, it's, I hope that's not the case. I'm really hoping they found them as carcasses because that's just a lot less problematic than, uh, than them killing our livestock. So you know, that, that's such a disheartening feeling. You you get these guardians and put so much time and effort and love and money into them just to protect your flock. And then if you think they're the source of your troubles, that can be really disheartening. Um, but we're not giving up. They're still, they're still young. Griffin in particular is just a pup. Um, and we didn't, we don't know for sure what happened. We're not jumping to conclusions. And uh, well, we're keeping them separate for now until the lambs are a little bit bigger and more capable. We're doing some, some supervised visitations where we let them in here and just observe their behavior. Um, Griffin's been kind of goofy lately. He just wants to be in his feeder. He, he won't come out of there. So yesterday we had Gertie in here and he was, she was doing great behaving herself. Um, Griffin, yeah, we'll see. Like I said, he's still a pup. He's got a lot of time to mature and grow up, so I just want to make sure all our, our babies stay safe this season. And I won't be surprised if next season's a, a very different scenario. But they've been integrating a little more lately, wouldn't you say? Goats and sheep? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, totally. Yeah, Sonata. Yeah, new goats are looking good. Looks like they've plumped up a little bit since we got them. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say definitely. Look, it looks like body conditions approved a bit, so that that makes me feel good. got a row of hazelnuts in these tubes here so we've learned our lesson that we need to put some protection around the tubes so they don't get pulled off and knocked down 
gives you kind of a nice gauge too for how to oh sorry freaking out the mob <laughs> Yeah, that's a tiny one. There she goes. <laughs> Hi, Donna. Notice the llama and the goats really like eating these grass flowers. They're they're pretty into it, which is nice. And, and to the point where Sonata is not even quite as interested in her grain as she used to be. It used to be you'd come out with her grain bucket, she'd come gallop over and snarf it down. Now, now she just kind of eh, eats a little bit and kind of wanders off like it's not that great. So, nice indicator that she's getting some good nutrition out here. Know how well it shows up on camera but it's kind of a nice indicator having these hazelnuts sectioned off I can see the color difference in the grass where they've been grazing for a day or two and then uh, you know some ungrazed patch it gives you a nice indicator for how uh, how much they're utilizing in this this tall stuff where they, they tend to leave a lot of stems but they're getting in there eating up the the fresh dark green leaves. Hi Griffin. You gonna come say hi? Oh here comes Gertie. Here comes the dogs. Oh yeah. <laughs> Alright. Well there we go. Covered in dogs. Yeah, I kinda yelled at Griffin the other day here ran through the fence when we were moving a wire and got in with a sheep and wouldn't listen so I hollered at him and he's been a little freaked out since then so I need to come and uh, do some good bonding time yeah they're a good dog yeah you are Oh. <laughs> what is it, Gertie? I think she's just reacting to the sheep reacting to me. Boy, that one's getting big already. Huh. What are you doing, buddy? Fully slicked off, that's great. Yep. Hard part with the rams is seeing their tag number. <laughs> yeah, that's Gurinder, right? 
Fabio. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, he's slicking off a lot quicker than Greg. Yeah, I mean we're talking about adding a billy or a buck goat to our mix this this fall, and then we'll end up with the three rams and one buck in the tractor, which sounds crowded to me. It'd be nice to get down to two rams, I think. Now, I don't know as our U flock grows, is two going to be yeah. enough? I'd like to see Fallon grow out a little bit longer, but on the other hand, the sun is so beautiful too. So like, yeah, we got a, a new generation. We need gener a ramp farm. Yeah, we can just keep them all, huh? Well, yes. Yeah, right? Well, they did a pretty good job on this. I mean, this is basically, what, three days working across this whole section, and they're knocking it down. Yeah. See a pretty big difference. There's a nice ch chunk of Gorinder fur there. See a pretty, pretty good difference at the line. We did mow this line to keep our power up, with, especially with these goats and new cows. We want to be conscientious about our voltage. Well, and the but, babies too. We want those babies to remember this. Like, don't go through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you can see the ungrazed portion over here is just. A world of difference compared to what they've, they've picked over here on the left. So yeah, we'll come out with our trimmer, cut a new path a bit that way, and we'll set up another fence. Um, we're kind of playing with fire here. We just have a, a two-wire fence at the edge here, which normally we have two. But we didn't get our second one wired up yesterday. We got the posts in and decided the grass is just too thick here. We really got to cut it first. So, yeah, we're, we're running two-wire electric and keeping goats in right now, which is pretty cool. This one's for the blooper reel. Oh, my God. <laughs> you look nervous. <laughs> I'm always nervous. Nice. Ninja moves. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, we'll keep you posted on how it goes integrating these cows with our farm and our, our flirt. And uh, I'm excited. We've wanted cattle since we started this project. And it's only two. And they won't be ready to breed for a whole year. But uh, it's a start. So. That's right. But it's all good. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.